As of today, more people in the U.S. have died from coronavirus than what's been reported out of China. And although many question China's numbers, and rightly so, the fact is here, with more than 3,700 deaths already, this is just the beginning. One model cited by the White House predicts that even with the social distancing steps we're taking, we'll be using peak hospital resources by April 15th. And at that time, the scientists at the University of Washington anticipate we'll be short around 60,000 hospital beds. They also expect we'll be seeing more than 2,000 deaths per day for several days. And ultimately, nearly 84,000 people will have died due to this virus by August 4th. Again, that's with all the steps we've taken. To that end, Governor Charlie Baker announced this afternoon he's extending non-essential business closures and the stay-at-home advisory in Massachusetts until May 4th. He extended the ban on gatherings of more than 10 people through that date as well. And once again, warned that people need to take these measures seriously. We know we've asked a lot of people, but there is more that must be done. The next couple of weeks are going to be critical in this battle. Everyone needs to play their part. People need to stay home as much as possible. Follow the essential business orders we've put in place. Use good personal hygiene and follow the social distancing guidelines to prevent the spread because it will make a huge difference. There are now 89 confirmed coronavirus deaths in Massachusetts and more than 6,600 cases. And perhaps the most disturbing outbreak has been at the soldiers' home in Holyoke, where 13 veterans have died. Six had confirmed coronavirus cases. Tests on the others are still pending. But several other residents and staff members have also tested positive for the virus, with around two dozen others showing symptoms. And yet somehow, government officials were apparently not told about any of this until this past Sunday, after the mayor's office got an anonymous tip, which Governor Baker also addressed today. In the short term, our primary focus is going to be on stabilizing and supporting the health and safety of the residents and their families. Uh, and we will get to the bottom of what happened and when and by who. The superintendent of the soldiers' home has been suspended. The National Guard is now helping to ramp up on-site testing. I'm joined now by Holyoke Mayor Alex Morse. And before we start, I want to say we did reach out to the soldiers' home for a statement. Have not heard back. Mayor Morse, I know it's a bad day, but I appreciate your time. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having us. I mentioned you were not notified. You got an anonymous tip on a Saturday. You reached out to them on the Sunday. Did the superintendent have any explanation as to why they were not disclosing this critical information? As I've already stated today, there was a, a clear lack of urgency on the phone call with the superintendent of the facility on Sunday night. We kept being told that everyone that had passed away had underlying health conditions, as if that was an adequate explanation for uh, the passing of, of several veterans at, at the soldiers' home. And, you know, number one, we were just shocked. I mean, it, it was Sunday that I learned that eight veterans had passed away between Wednesday and my, my outreach to the superintendent on Sunday. And number one, shocked that that had taken place. And then number two, incredibly disappointed and upset that our Board of Health and my office was not notified um, about, the, about the deaths uh, due to the virus. And then come to find out that the state who runs the facility was also not notified. Well, yeah, when you say the state was also not notified, I think I read in the Globe that you had some concern that the state secretary of Veterans Affairs was not terribly transparent, I think was your word on that call either. What do you mean? Well, so I got off the phone with the superintendent of the Soldiers' Home. Uh, he then connected uh, the superintendent and the secretary of Veterans Affairs, uh, had a follow-up phone call with me, and it was more of the same. Uh, providing the uh, same information, underlying health conditions. Um, you know, but from my perspective, I was finding this out as mayor. Yes, I don't oversee the facility, but these are people that live in, in, in my city. Uh, we have employees that work there, and it's our job to protect them at all costs. And so I got off the phone with the two of them and immediately reached out to the lieutenant governor, who got back within minutes. Uh, and within a half an hour, I had a phone call on my cell from uh, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, Mary Lou Sutters, who promised me she would take immediate action on Monday morning. Had the families of the people who had died been notified that they had died or that their loved ones were in serious condition and at risk of death? I mean, this situation has just been horrific all around. Over the last 24 hours, I have had direct outreach 
on Facebook Messenger, on email, by phone, of families that are frantically trying to reach their loved ones, uh, people finding out about the situation on the news. And so an utter lack of communication to not only government officials, uh, but to the most important people, the, the people that live there themselves, the employees, uh, and the loved ones of people that have family members there. So I want to be clear. Some of the family members had not been notified that their loved ones had died until the press reports? That's what we've heard from, from one family in particular that they found out uh, from the news uh, last night. I can't answer for the particulars around communication of the soldiers home. Uh, but again, I, I want to thank the state for acting swiftly uh, since I, I, I did my outreach on Sunday night. And I think the governor made it clear at his briefing this afternoon that if not for that contact, the governor, the lieutenant governor, nor Secretary Sutters uh, would have been aware of the extent of the problem at the soldiers home. I know there have been uh, reports of staff shortages over the last few years, but staff shortages aside, this behavior obviously is totally unacceptable. Have, in your conversations with Lieutenant Governor or any Mayor Lou Sutters, will there be consequences for the people who chose not to disclose the deaths of these individuals, or is a resignation of a superintendent enough? I think more action is going to be needed. It certainly raises uh, a lot more questions than answers. And I think, you know, the state needs to have a difficult conversation around means of communication between uh, the superintendent, the facility, um, and the appropriate state agency. And so that is certainly uh, a problem in communication with the local, the local Board of Health. So you said again that the explanation to you from the superintendent was the people had underlying conditions. There are lots of people with underlying conditions that survive. And in one facility, there's been nothing close to what you're des describing here. Is part of what the state is doing trying to get to the underlying issues and the truth as to what led to this incredibly large number of deaths? Yeah, I mean, that is certainly going to play out and happen, but I think our number one concern right now is, is saving as many lives as possible, keeping people healthy and safe. Um, with the replacement of the superintendent, the medical response team, the activation of the National Guard to expedite testing of all employees and all residents there. Uh, but this had turned, turned from one case into now dozens of cases, 13 deaths. Um, it seems to me there's a clear lack of quarantine or isolation of the initial positive case where employees are reaching out to me as their mayor. Um, I had a call this afternoon of an employee in tears scared to go on their 3 p.m. shift because they didn't think they'd have adequate protection. Uh, and so this, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, this is just very real for people here. Um, you know, we're a, we're a city of 40,000 people, a close-knit community, um, have always had respect and adoration for our veterans. And so this is not just, you know, it's hurting the families, of course, but I mean, everyone in Holyoke's hurting today. And you appear convinced that with the state's intervention that as much care as is necessary will be given to the remaining occupants. Is that a fair statement? I mean, that's my hope. I mean, we live in the, in the wealthiest country on earth, and we asked the veterans that live in the soldier's home. Uh, I mean, they stood up to serve for all of us, and it's, it, it's incumbent upon us to do everything we can to keep them healthy, to keep them safe, uh, and they frankly deserve better. And I think this is a wake-up call. Uh, to leadership at the soldiers' home, uh, to leadership at the state level, um, all the way up to the federal level. These are, these are veterans, um, and we need to remember that. Perfectly said. Mr. Mayor, could not agree more. Thank you so much for your time, Mayor Alex Morris. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jim.